to our lives. You see, the truth is our life really only makes sense in the context of the Great Commission. Think about it. The way you live out your vocation, your mission, your job, the way you love those around you is to be done in a way that points people back to relationship with him. Colossians 3.17 says this, and the Passion Translation is beautiful. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. You see, as followers of Jesus, we all have a job and a part to play. Ministry, evangelism, missions, outreach, service. These are not electives of the Christian faith as we often think of them. No, they are parts of the job description. We don't get an option to be excluded from those things. When you say, I'm a follower of Jesus, you're saying yes to being involved and being engaged in the Great Commission. You know, in the church, we often think of the word calling in a very Christianese kind of way such as, oh, he or she is called to that. And we do it in a way that often is used to justify the actions of someone else. Or maybe we do it even in a way to exempt ourselves from engaging. But the truth is, the Bible really talks about one true calling, and that is the calling to salvation, the calling to know and worship our Heavenly Father and to bring others along with us in that relationship. Perhaps significant to us today is that God's call is the means by which he makes us human beings, which are entirely unqualified, into instruments of his will and his purpose and his plan. I want to share a quick story with you, and you may find it a bit amusing, but back in junior high and high school, I was extremely short, actually the shortest guy on the basketball team. And I remember as we played the games, I was sitting on the end of the bench because I was not any good, and I would await anxiously the end of the game, when there's two or three minutes left, our team hopefully is up by 30 points where surely the, can't, the game can't be blown out. And coach would look at the end of the bench and say, hey, ring, get in. I get my couple minutes of fame, maybe get a shot off, probably a few turnovers. But the truth is, I think so many Christians today are in that kind of waiting game, sitting by nominally on the sidelines, on the bench, waiting for someone to encourage them, to equip them, to catalyze them to get into the game. When the truth is, God all along has already told you, he, you don't need to ask for permission because you've already been commissioned. We just read about it. But we need to get in the game and be a part of what God is doing because we have a part to play. So stop waiting on someone to encourage you or give you permission. Get involved, get engaged in what God is doing around your community and around the world and do it now. Because we are the method. We are that one method that God has chosen to bring people back to him. You know, oftentimes we think about the enemy of the gospel as being Satan, right? There's good, there's evil. But the truth is the enemy of the gospel is not simply Satan. The enemy of the gospel is the Christian that does everything but share it. Ask yourself the question, is the life that I'm living, is it impacting anyone around me for Christ? And it's a good thing to search our hearts and our souls to know. Oscar Romero, who was an archbishop in some South American country, which slips my mind, said this, and I love this quote. He says, a church that does not provoke any crisis, a gospel that does not unsettle, a word of God that does not get under anyone's skin, or that does not touch the real sin of the society in which it is being proclaimed, what kind of gospel is that? Now, Jesus' first message enraged the crowd so much that they tried to throw him off the cliff. Is the life that we're living, are the things that we're doing unsettling anything around us, or is it just going along with the status quo? See, the way that we live as followers of Jesus should make a difference to those around us. It should provoke things. It should stir up conversation. It should make people ask the question, why or what is it that's different? Because the way of the cross is, is and the way of Christ is very countercultural. It's very subversive. It doesn't make sense to the ways of our societal norms. The way of the cross says, the first shall be last. The way of the cross says, love your enemy, turn the other cheek, bless those who curse you, and the greatest among us will do the dishes. Jesus didn't suffer the cross for us to live small lives that don't matter and that don't change the environment in which we live in. 